This week's edition of Church Media Design TV is sponsored by TripleWideMedia.com, your source for multi-screen content. Welcome to another edition of Church Media Design TV Tips, Tricks, and How To for You, the Church Media Designer. I'm your host, Brad Zimmerman, and I am joined, as always, by my favorite bobble headed friends. You got it right. We got Jamie and Adam from the Mythbusters. We got Dwight Troot, who is losing his best friend in the office. We got Little Whitey, and of course, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Lord Most High. Well, on this week's edition, we're going to be talking about how to video podcast your sermons from your church uh, for free online and take a lot of the hassle out of the process. I think you guys are going to love this service. It works really, really well. Um, as well as uh, right here at the top of the show, I want to point out uh, my new shirt. And the only reason I want to point it out is not because it's cool, but because 100% of the proceeds from this shirt uh, went to uh, Help Japan. And if you check out uh, my buddy James White's uh, website, um, signalnoise.com, he has a poster that's available uh, for Help Japan. It's a really great, iconic image. Um, and he's been shipping those out. But then another designer, um, Hydro74, um, who actually used to be a designer for Relevant Magazine or did freelance for them, um, has put out this shirt as part of um, a Salvation Army initiative. And so if we, uh, if we check out this shirt here, you'll see it's the wardrobe... Um, uh, army apparel and you have uh, you can order this shirt for 20 bucks and you know all the money from the proceeds go towards it and uh, the shirt actually says save world army on it so if you're wondering what it what it actually means so if you want to pick up one of those shirts you can head over to hydro 74's website or to uh, james white's website to pick up that awesome poster um, and all of those links are in the show notes at cmd.tv slash 127 you can find all the links there and um, james white actually lists out a bunch of different ways you can get involved in uh, helping Japan. So some really great stuff there to help out uh, a cause that definitely needs it um, right now. And we want to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters in Japan um, throughout this tragedy. Also, uh, today we're talking about a bunch of crazy news. I'm going to give you guys a ton of great resources and some free stuff. So if my favorite bobbleheaded friends are ready, let's get into it. Well, today's news is about a brand new version of Firefox. Firefox 4 just came out, and after a, a whole ton of um, beta versions and that sort of thing, Firefox 4 is now ready for download. You can check out on their website that they have you know two, uh, 26,432,386 downloads to date. This has only been out for about three or four days as of taping, so um, you know this thing is getting a ton, a ton of downloads. Um, there's some really great videos that you can watch that take you through this uh, what's different you know they now have app tabs or pin tabs which is now uh, going to become standard basically in all browsers that you can have um, you know application tabs that are always you know your mail client or you know web apps that are always on the uh, left side of your screen so you never lose them as well as they have a brand new JavaScript rendering engine they've cleaned up a lot of the software to help it run faster and it's all HTML5 standard compliant and um, speaking of that if we check out their web o wonder page web open wonder or web o wonder page you can uh, check out all of the crazy demos they have here of you know web gl video design html5 so um, and you can kind of navigate through here and see some different interesting things so um, you know like let's check out the uh, planetarium here this is a html5 um, astrological adventure uh, click a planet to start and you can see so all of this stuff no flash here this is all HTML5 we can see all this crazy different very um, very interesting looking um, stuff and you can see how fast this is rendering and moving around so um, and you got a lot of interactive stuff going on. So HTML5 is where it's at. Again, if you want to find out more about what HTML5 is, we have an episode all about that that kind of demystifies what's going on there because it's not just a piece of software. It's JavaScript working with CSS, working, working with HTML markup to create 
all of this new web app stuff. So um, I encourage you guys, go download Firefox 4. If you've left and moved to Chrome or you decided IE9 is the best thing ever, um, stick with open source. Um, the guys behind Firefox are always doing it for you, the consumer. That's why there's um, certain things that aren't even in Firefox because they want to hold true to true open source standards, um, which I think is pretty awesome of them in this day and age of being bought out by the, the next biggest thing and wanting to make the most money. So uh, check out Firefox 4. Well, let's reach into the stockpile and grab some great resources for you and your church. And the first one is from Smashing Magazine. Now, this is an awesome website. Haven't talked about it in a little while, but I encourage you guys to subscribe to this site. Tons of great web development tools and ideas and tutorials on this site. And this one that caught my attention has to do with what we were talking about in our news segment, HTML5, and this is syncing content with HTML5 video. So um, now in HTML5, there's an, actually a video and audio object. And what basically this tutorial goes through is how to convert your video so that it's a WebM format, which is a open source format, and where you can host it and all that sort of thing, as well as a service called Vidly that will convert it into all formats that will work in all browsers and, and what that's all about. But then it's going to talk about how to actually go through and use the video API to sync your content. So you can sync content and have, you know, um, web pages show up or Google Maps show up and it goes through all of the, the markup and how to do it all and um, talks about some different interesting ways to do that along the way. So I think it's a really cool thing. And so if you're looking to do, you know, maybe this is something you want to look into if you wanted to do an online small group resource or you wanted to do... Um, any sort of like a prayer resource or something where you had, or even Sunday morning, you can have your video from Sunday morning synced with slides or text or information. And every time it hits certain parts of the video, content syncs up with it, um, which could be a really cool immersive experience rather than just watching a video or something like that. So uh, check out that article. The next one is uh, I was working on a project recently. I needed a retro font and I was searching around looking for something and then I realized, Brad, you're an idiot. Go to Font Diner. Font Diner has been around for a long time, and you can see here it's a retro diner vibe. But what they have is they have all of these great retro fonts, um, and this is the uh, Country Fair, Fair Picnic special, but they have a ton of different great uh, retro fonts in here. So if you're looking for um, some different fonts or um, that sort of thing, we can, you know, we can check out the free font. So they have all these different uh, free ones in here and Mac and PC and they have, you know, just tons of great stuff. So if you're looking to get that real retro vibe from, you know, the 70s and 60s, uh, this is a great place to look. Next up is a awesome website that um, John Saddington, who runs the 8-Bit Network, uh, started up, and it's called Tent Blogger. And if you're blogging or your church's website runs on WordPress, this is a site for you to check out. If you're wondering, how do I you know, go about building a reputation online, or what, what are the best plugins to use, or how do I get started in all of this, Tent Blogger's got you covered. I think this is an awesome site. He does stuff like this um, jump starter um, ideas on and how to, you know, ideas for posts that you can do, as well as he has updates on, you know, his standard theme, of course, but, you know, we can simplify and speed up your workflow on commenting on blogs. Um, he actually has domains, which this is pretty funny. I'm going to show you this real fast. He's got a bunch of domains that he's trying to sell. Um, one of them that I thought was pretty hilarious is churchnorris.com, which I think could be awesome and funny, and I would love for one of you viewers to go buy that domain and start a Church Chuck Norris ripoff because, well, if you're going to do a ripoff, it should be a Chuck Norris ripoff. Um, that's the new tagline of CMD. Um, but they have a ton of different stuff, so like churchvid.com, you know, if you wanted to start a competitor to Worship House Media, which is a pretty bad idea, um, just because they've been around for a long time. But if you wanted to, you know, start a site like that, or you wanted to do all sorts of different stuff, he's got a, a ton of great different uh, deals there, as well as 
great articles on how to run your church's website on a system like WordPress or how to you know start blogging professionally and I think it's just a great site for you to check out. Um, as I said before, one of his um, one of his deals is the 8-bit network, which one of their sites is Church Create, and Church Create has this awesome article about a brand new camera app that I think is pretty interesting. It's called Collab Camera, or Collab Cam, and one person is your director via iPod Touch, iPad, iPhone, whatever. And then you can have, I think, four other people um, running this, and you can actually do a multi-camera shoot via a bunch of iPhone cameras. So it costs seven seven bucks an app, but you can you can make this into one movie. You have all these different people out there. So think about how interesting this would be if you um, got a bunch of students who are passionate about doing this, and you were at a retreat for a weekend and said. Okay, you guys are going to go do a video shoot of this event, and you're going to be calling the shots from this thing, and, and you can actually send cues to people, so you can say, you know, pan right or whatever, and tell people what they need to be doing while they're shooting their video. So, really interesting. I have no idea what the quality is like. It's an app that I kind of want to check out. So, um, you can check out all of those links and even more resources at the website in the show notes at cmd.tv slash 127. So check out all the show notes in there and add a bunch of that stuff to your arsenal. Well, before we move on, let's say thank you to our sponsor of TripleWideMedia.com, your source for multi-screen content. If we head over to their website, you're going to find out that they have a whole ton of different stuff going on here from, you know, stilled sacred panoramas to some glittering gold stuff. Um, and we can check out some individual clips here like this color wash loop. Um, and as you can see, it's just a nice, simple, abstract loop. But one of the cool things is they actually have realistic loops as well. And so we have this, um, this really nice wheat loop here. Um, and so we got this great pan going on. And think about what that would look like at the back of your space across the stage. It would set this whole new vibe going on with that. And the coolest part about all of this content is it comes with the triple wide, double wide, and single wide with every single purchase. So we can preview the uh, what would the double wide look like and it will load that up for us here. And so that's what the uh, double wide version looks like. And then the single wide version here uh, looks like so. So um, if you're thinking about, you know, you're like, well, Brad, I don't really use multi-screen content. I don't have that kind of stuff going on. Even though you talked about it last week that you can get the advanced module for Pro Presenter for Windows now, I still don't think I'm going to do it. But you can buy this content right now. So go find a background that you really love and you're going to get the single wide version right now, but you'll also have the double and triple wide for the future when you do a special event or your, uh, you decide to go with uh, multi-screen content in your room. So this is a future-proof way to get your media. So I want to encourage you guys to go check out all of the countdowns, the stills, the motions, and mini movies at triplewidemedia.com. Now, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about video podcasting your sermon or your messages or whatever you want to call them, or maybe you want to video podcast some other content. We're going to do this for free with a service called blip.tv. Now, uh, a few things that I'm not going to cover, but I'll give you some resources for real fast. I'm not going to cover how to actually create that video. We're going to talk about what to do with the video after you have it. Now, if you want to find out more on how to compress that video down into a format that's usable, I would encourage you to check out my rendering, uh, compression, rendering, compression, and codecs, everything you want to know, or I can't remember exactly what it's called, but... Um, you can check out the link below and that will sh uh, send you to that page and check out that one that talks about how to compress this into the right format. Um, but this service will kind of help us do that anyway. Um, so it's a little bit less important, but it is important to know what uh, what codecs to use and that sort of thing because we're, um, we're creating a podcast feed that's going to go to a bunch of different devices and hopefully end up on people's iPhones and iPads, iPod Touches, as well as Zooms and Blackberries and all sorts of crazy different stuff. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, uh, one thing that uh, comes in handy is knowing how to make that video correctly. 
So another uh, cool thing to check out is iTunes making a podcast page. This is their podcasting resources. Um, and you can uh, find out, uh, where is it at here, formatting video for the iPod Touch, iPhone, iPad, Apple TV. So it talks about the uh, maximum video size for each device. So iPod Touch and iPhone 4 can have up to 960 by 640. I'm guessing this is the newest generation of iPod Touch iPad can do 1024, 768, and Apple TV can do 720p, 1280, 720. So um, <clears throat> that's the size of video that you can put on it. I find it really, really interesting that the iPhone 4 can shoot HD video but can't play back HD video. Kind of interesting. Um, and they say that the screen is HD retina display kind of stuff. But it talks about the, um, you know, what it can and can't play. Um, so it does show that this uh, can play up to 720p at 30 frames per second. And like I talked about in that rendering and compression episode, you have to use main profile 3.1 or else it won't be compatible. Weird little stuff with that. And then it talks about Apple TV and all of those sorts of things, as well as it gives you an example feed that you can create. Now, I've talked about podcasting on some of my very first episodes, and I haven't really talked about it since then, but I wanted to talk about video because we're now in a day and age where a lot of churches are recording video as well as the resources for sending video out has become a lot better. People have more bandwidth in their homes, that sort of thing. So uh, we're going to talk about that today. And the service that we're going to talk about isn't a Christian service. It's not something built for the church, um, but I really think it's one of your best solutions and it's Blip TV. Now we can check out their website and the first thing you'll know is that they have what seems like a lot of scandalous not Christian stuff. Now your church might freak out about that and say wow there's you know people kissing on the front page and it actually looks like two girls. Um, we don't want our content there and I can understand that but one of the best parts about Blip TV is that no one's ever going to go to Blip TV. Now, uh, I was actually reading through a forum post and somebody's like, how does Blip TV actually make money to stay in business? Because all of this is free. Now, they stay in business because of um, ads on their website, but you can also make money off those ads. And I think they also make um, money off distribution contracts. So um, let's go check out um, and sign up here. Now, I've already created a sign up, but I wanted to just show you this real quick. Um, so you can enter your own username and show name, um, and then you actually get your own custom show address. So um, you know you can go to whatever, so yourchurch.blip.tv, um, as well as if you have a PayPal account, all you have to do is put the PayPal email address in there and say enable advertising in my show, and they'll start putting um, uh, pre-show advertising as well as lower thirds. They actually can do mid-show and post-show um, uh, inserts as well. So um, some interesting ways to make money if you're interested in that. Most churches would say, let's not do that. That's probably not a good idea. Um, so we're just going to log into an account I already have created for today. So now that we've logged in, you can see this is our uh, dashboard area and we have episodes, players, distribution, advertising, statistics, and settings. Now, uh, one thing they're saying is you should turn on ads. They want you to turn on ads because not only do you make money, but they make money and everything stays in business. They also have a pro account that you can buy. Um, I actually use this for CMD. I haven't bought in the pro account yet because I haven't found a need for it. Um, but if you feel the need to grab a pro account, you can do so. Um, so we can go to episodes. And if we would go to episodes, we would see a list of all of our episodes. However, there's nothing here, so we got Bubkiss. And so what we're going to do is there's a couple different ways to actually upload your content to Blip TV. Now, one of these is my absolute favorite because it makes it so much faster for me, and it's an FTP upload. Now, if we go to FTP upload, what they'll tell you here is that your FTP login is just ftp.blip.tv, so that's your FTP address. And then your username and password are your username and password for Blip TV. So whatever your account is and whatever your password is, that's your FTP login info. Now, when you connect to that account, you'll just be in an empty folder and you can upload video into there. Now, if you're saying, I have no idea what FTP is, FTP is File Transfer Protocol. And what that is, is a way to upload files and download files 
to web servers. Now, um, one of my favorite programs is FileZilla. It's an open source program. Um, you can, it's not actually made by Mozilla, but it's an awesome program. Um, you can check that out. I use it all the time. Uh, as well as you can use programs like we talked about a little while ago, the Adobe Media Encoder actually has an FTP option in it. So you can, you know, set up your FTP credentials and once your encode is done, it'll automatically upload it to Blip TV and Blip will do all of its work and it's all pure magic and it makes your life a lot easier. So that's one way to upload. Um, and what it basically says here is um, your videos will be posted to your Blip TV account uh, after 15 minutes of inactivity. So basically upload, wait 15 minutes, and you're golden to go. The other way you can do this is via their web upload. Now their web upload has a one gig limit, which is not exactly the best for all of us. You may have files that are bigger. Um, but they also have a desktop upload. Now this is um, what I would recommend that you guys grab. Now the desktop upload uses Java for Windows, so you have to make sure that's installed. Um, they have Linux instructions and the Mac one's pretty straightforward. Now the one weird thing about this app for Windows is it actually doesn't install, install it's just an exe, uh, exe file that runs. So you may want to put it in a specific spot just to run it over and over again. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna log into my account. And now that I'm logged into my account, it's going to say I can drag and drop files, um, including any large image files you want to use as thumbnails. So what I have here is a video. So uh, this is our video that we're gonna upload. Well, here's our uh, little piece of test footage um, that we're gonna use today. So this was shot on my iPhone 4, and I just want it to be short and simple so that we can um, upload this to uh, Blip TV and show you how distribution works and everything else. So as you can see, that's our little test video. And then I also have this random, this has nothing to do, but let's say this is our series graphic for Sunday. This happens to be a sled day slide that I made for our middle school ministry. Um, I love this photo. That's part of the reason I wanted to show it to you. I found this on uh, the stock exchange. Awesome photo. Um, so we have that photo going on there. I'm just going to take both of these files and I'm going to drop them right in here. Then I'm just going to hit next. Now the cool thing about this is um, it actually goes in, here's our file, we can throw in a title. So let's say this is, you know, Sunday teaching, um, or let's say this is our series, so we'll call this the sled day, and we'll say uh, how not to break your face. Okay, so this is Sled Day, How to Not Break Your Face, and that's the name of our, our title for our series. Um, Brad shows us how to not break our face while sledding. Um, so that's our, our description. We can go in here and select our thumbnail. We can also set a license. Um, there's a bunch of different Creative Commons licenses. Um, basically, this uh, attribute, um, attribute uh, the first one here, I can't remember how to say that word right now, um, is probably an easy one. If not, you can just say public domain or no license, all rights reserved, whichever you um, care to. I'm just gonna do uh, this uh, main one here. Then we could tag this if we want to. These tags will get used in search engines, that sort of thing. So if we wanted to say like CMD TV or Brad Zimmerman or sledding or moto. Um, and then we can set a category for this. So let's say this is for a uh, church thing. So we're gonna put religion in here. We're gonna go in here and set content rating. I would suggest you set a content rating. So instead of doing none, do TPG um, for general audiences, uh, or you can do none. And then you can set your language and we can confirm form complete, and then we can hit next. So now this is gonna go through and actually upload this file to the server. And as you can see here, it's gonna take just a few minutes to go through and upload this file and you can see your transfer rate. Now, all of these transfer rates are based on your own rates of your internet at your facility or building or whatever your office. So our video is finished uploading so we can hit click to view. And this is going to bring us to our actual um, video page. And this is where, you know, people would be able to see this and comment on it and that sort of thing on Blip TV if you would send people to watch it there. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to edit. 
And when we go to edit, this is actually inside our dashboard and you can see the title of our show and our description, all of that information that we put was there along with our tags. And you can see the external link to our um, file and then we have comments and views and we would have statistics here as well as um, external players and that sort of thing. Um, but down here we'll see that we have our distribution status and we have blip.tv uh, completed and iTunes completed. Now what this means, and here's our video that just popped up and you can see that's what we uploaded. Um, we have a source file and we have a thumbnail. So if I just uh, click on this thumbnail, you'll see there's our thumbnail and it looks great um, and we can use that wherever we want. And if I click on the source video, this video is going to pop up here um, after it loads up and that's our video file. Now what we want to do is uh, also, it's telling us that our SD uh, version of this video that they're automatically going to convert for us in H.264 format is um, queued up for conversion. Now, when you pay for the, the uh, pro version, you get faster conversion rates. But I'll give you one tip. Um, you don't need to worry about those conversions if you put the correct file up to begin with. If you put a converted H.264 file online from the get-go, you're not going to have to wait for any of this conversion time. Now you can see here that it says blip.tv slash iTunes completed. What does that mean? Well, if we go to distribution, we can go to overview. And in here you can see that there's um, basically Blip TV is so great because of its distribution system. Now what you can do here is you can actually um, upload the Blip and Blip will push your video out to all of these other sites. So we can go to Internet Archive, Vimeo, YouTube, we can go to different aggregators like iTunes, VodPod, AOL Video, we can do um, Facebook feed, we can do MySpace, we can add blogs. Twitter, and we also can go to television set-top um, boxes, so we can go to, you know, Boxy or Roku, or we can go to TiVo and Vizio, that sort of thing. So you can see right now that um, iTunes is configured, and if we would click on iTunes, you'll see that our show um, URL is right here, this uh, vinmarkproductions.blip.tv slash rss slash iTunes. And if we want to, we can go add in some more specific stuff. So our author name is going to be Brad Zimmerman. Uh, let me capitalize my own last name. That'd probably be a good idea. We're going to go with the category of not performing arts. We're going to go to the category of um, religious Christianity. And we're going to, uh, we could choose a file. However, I don't think this file is formatted the way iTunes wants it to be. Um, so I don't even think it's going to work. So if we would go to our desktop and pull up this Moto sled file, we'll try it, but I'm 99% sure that it's, yeah, it needs to be a JPEG, PNG, or uh, JPEG that's 600 by 600. So that file we just chose isn't really going to work. So I'm going to copy and paste this um, podcast URL. Now, um, I actually, uh, you can see this here. I pasted this into Chrome, and um, it looks horrible. It's really hard to understand. So I did it into Firefox, and it's much easier to see. So this is our RSS feed, and as you can see here, we have the name of our show, and then we have the name of our item, we have the subtitle, and then we actually have the final file. So what this feed actually uses is your original source file for the podcast feed. So you want to make sure that that video file is something that iTunes can use, or better yet, what iPods and iPod Touches and iPads and all of the different people that are using it can actually use that file. So then all we would need to do is copy and paste this. Now, if you wanted to, you could add this to FeedBurner to get um, analytics on it. However, um, one thing that I've noticed is that the uh, analytics from blip.tv are really, really great. You can see um, from our episodes that they have a whole, you know, how many, how many views, how long is it, what's the revenue, it'll tell you if it's still converting, it lists out all of that stuff, tells you, you know, all of those things that, you know, that's the basic stuff that you want to know. So if you don't want to add it to FeedBurner, you don't really have to. But then we would just go into, let's say, iTunes here, and we're going to go to Podcasts, and, oops, sorry, iTunes Store. We're going to click on this Podcast button. And we're going to go over on the side here and we're going to do submit a podcast. 
and then we would um, paste in our podcast feed and hit continue. Now, when adding um, podcast feed to iTunes, it uses whatever account you're logged into as the owner of that account. So make sure you're using an account that's your church's or maybe your media department's, but not one of your own personal accounts if you don't want to have that conflict going on. So that's how you would add that feed into, uh, into iTunes. Now let's say, okay, so now we have our podcast going online. It's created an RSS feed for us with all of the information and it's going on to people's devices it's allowing them to download it through iTunes and you could use that RSS feed for a lot of other readers as well but what about on your website you want to show this video on your website well there's a couple different options um, in our distribution area here let's go back you'll see there's a couple different ways we can do this um, and the two big ones are through Vimeo and YouTube now a uh, quick word about YouTube uh, YouTube um, has a 15 minute time limit for most of their normal accounts. You need to become a YouTube partner, which is an application process to actually become a YouTube partner. Um, and that lifts that time limit. Um, I'm currently going through that process. Um, so YouTube, even though it may seem like a great place to put all your uh, teaching videos, it's not necessarily the best one. However, Vimeo is a great place to do it. Now, what they tell you here is that you have to have Vimeo Plus, and uh, on Vimeo's website you can see here, this is what Plus gives you. Um, it's $59.95 a year. What you get is five gigs a week of upload, um, no banner ads, you get priority uploading, you get HD uploading, HD embedding on every single site. Um, customized um, players so you can get rid of the Vimeo logo. You can only have a play button if you wanted to. You can make it very simple, change the color scheme so it fits for your site. This is what we use for CMD. Um, you can always download the source file so they hold that source file on their server for you forever. Um, as well as you get great analytics from them on the playback there. Now the cool thing is the analytics from Vimeo actually get passed back to Blip. So um, when I'm looking at, you know, I uh, send over my HD version of CMD from Blip to Vimeo and all of the view count from um, Vimeo is sh shows up in my view count on Blip. So it's, it's a pretty neat thing. So um, you would need to link your accounts and uh, it's a pretty easy process to link those accounts together. Um, you shouldn't really have a hard time, but you have to have Vimeo Plus to, to do that. So there is a little bit of money involved, but 60 bucks a year is a really great deal and I think you'll find it um, really nice. So the one other thing you might want to do is add it to your face, your church's Facebook uh, fan page. So if you go to Facebook feed here, they actually have a really great, it's a two minute and 52 second video that walks you through this whole process. Super simple. I'm not going to redo something they've already done. So I encourage you to go check that video out and you can activate your uh, Facebook activation. Now, one thing that I'm going to point out that they talked about in that video is actually how to push your content to um, your different networks. Uh, Vimeo and some of the other ones, iTunes is an automatic distribution. However, Vimeo and Facebook and some of the other types aren't automatic. So what we need to do is go to all episodes and we're gonna click on our sled day, how not to break your face. And I'm gonna click the edit button, okay? Now in this edit button, we're gonna see that we have files and roles. So here's our master file. We can actually add additional formats and files if we wanted to. We can update our metadata or if you forgot to um, add it or if you, um, let's say, uh, uploaded via the FTP uploader, which doesn't give you metadata, you can go in and add that metadata as soon as the file is online. So you can do that there or we can go to distribution. So what we can do here is if we had our stuff linked up, we would just check the box for Vimeo or check the box for YouTube or check the box for Facebook feed or you would see your fan pages feed there and you would um, select that. So um, you would just do that and you'd hit save all changes and just a moment we're figuring it out and working on it and then it will automatically uh, send all that video out to all of those places for you. So a really great way to do this. As you can see, it's very simple. There's no coding involved. 
Um, it's a really easy process. That desktop uploader really makes it super simple for you guys. So if you have any questions or comments on how to do this, make sure to throw um, questions and comments in the show notes at cmd.tv slash 127, as well as you can find all of the, the links to the pages and videos. And I'll actually embed that how to um, add it to your Facebook page video into the, the show notes of this episode. So you can find that all at the show notes. So um, yeah, start video podcasting your messages. Well, this week's inspiration comes to us from Hillsong College in Australia. Now, Hillsong Church has a college where you can go to learn to become singers and musicians and um, film and TV producers. And they wanted to give you kind of a behind-the-scenes glimpse at what goes on there. And so you can find out here, um, you know, why the project. And they talk about how it's a three-part documentary um, with a behind-the-scenes look at uh, collaboration between musicians, singers, production, and TV teams um, as they craft a large-scale worship event. They have a, a trailer for this that talks about the heart behind why they're doing this and what... Uh, Hillsong College is all about, but the video I wanted to show you, um, not that the other one isn't interesting, but this one is uh, very inspirational because of how creative it is. Um, and this video is all about how they took a uh, old piano and combined it with new technology, and it's pretty awesome, so uh, check this out. This is a MIDI controller that has been built into an antique piano. The concept for this piano came from an interesting idea to blend both digital and organic means of making music together. Um, Also, I thought it would make a pretty good visual effect on stage. One of the first things we did was to start stripping away the parts to see what we had to work with. We took off the panels um, and uh, all of the keys as well. We really wanted to preserve a lot of the Uh, mechanical aspects of the antique piano, like the hammer swing and kind of the heavy, slow key feel. And so what we ended up doing, uh, since we can't have the hammers strike the the strings anymore, was we shifted the entire keyboard tray back about an inch and repositioned it. We ended up coming up with a very, very simple mechanism of attaching two screws to the bottom of each key and allowing it to contact the sensors of the MIDI controller that was laid just underneath it. As well, uh, the sustain pedal of the antique piano is hooked up to MIDI, just completes the entire antique feel of everything. So far, uh, this piano has been used in our 2011 college opener, which is a big creative presentation that we use to open up the school year. This year's was included a short film that blended seamlessly into a worship set. During that transition, this piano was one of the main stage pieces that was revealed. The musical director was actually playing it live and using it to command and direct the band from it as well as play keys. This is an example of just some of the creativity that we're starting to see at college. We really encourage and embrace uh, things like this and ideas. If you want to see more things like it, check out theproject.hillsongcollege.com where we've got some really cool things coming up. This week's freebie is a series graphic. It is a quite simple series graphic, but it might come in handy for you. Um, It's for a series that we're doing right now called Love God. And, um, you know, there's so many different things we're talking about. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And, you know, you can do a lot of things with that, but I really wanted to just break it down to a very simple form. Um, So you can download this, uh, the editable Photoshop uh, files will be online as well as widescreen and full screen stills and you know background uh, uh, support materials and that sort of thing. So you can download this on the website at cmd.tv slash lovegod. Um, you can find all of that there. Um, so download that. You can edit it, make it into something else or improve upon it, whatever you want. So uh, go over to the website and download it today. 
Well, thanks for tuning in to another edition of Church Media Design TV. If you have any questions or comments, I encourage you to leave those in our show notes at cmd.tv slash 127. You can leave all those questions there. Um, so if you're having any problems with blip.tv or if you think you have a better solution for video podcasting for free, um, I encourage you to throw those up there as well. Um, and if you have any questions about, you know, I want to do more with this or walk through this step more, I didn't grab that. You know, I want to hear those kind of things so that I can make sure to best resource you guys. Um, so leave those there as well as you can find me at uh, twitter.com slash cmdtv. You can find us at facebook.com slash cmdtv. Um, and of course you can always email me brad at churchmediadesign.tv. So hopefully you guys learned a little something, you were inspired, you were resourced, um, and most of all you realize that what you do matters for the kingdom, what you do with this media and how you, um, what you do in your local church um, has an impact for eternity. And so thank you for doing what you do every single week. Um, and stay encouraged. I know sometimes it gets really easy to get um, discouraged along the way, but be encouraged that what you do matters. So uh, as for me and my favorite bobbleheaded friends, we're saying see you later.